Some words from Luke's Gospel. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other as you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them said, whose name was Cleopas, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he answered them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped he would be the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since all these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. Well, they were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Well, some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. Then he said to them, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in Scripture. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly to say, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to, to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were open, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they decided to go up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered there. And they were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, he's appeared to Simon. And then they told what had happened on the road, how he had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. So, there we were on the road to Emmaus, Cleopas and I walking along, sometimes talking, sometimes just thinking, but the time it's just arguing as to what had happened, where it has all gone wrong. I mean, it has been an awful three days. We'd watched Jesus die. Our friend, our leader, he'd been crucified. How did that happen? We'd thought he was going to be the one who was going to liberate Israel. We'd been with him from the beginning, you know, well, not quite the beginning, but not long after. We'd watched him teach, we'd watched him preach, we'd watched him heal, we'd watched him debate, we'd watched him lift people up. 
we'd heard him, we'd experienced him. In some ways we lived with him. We were his people. We were his friends. One of us betrayed him. Well, we say betrayed. I know what Judas was thinking about. I mean, he, he'd always wanted Jesus to do more. Maybe he was trying to force his hand. Who knows? Anyway, when it came to it, we heard everybody ran away. Even Peter. I mean, I'd heard that Peter had denied he even knew Jesus. Peter. And there we were on Sabbath, all locked up in this upper room, wondering what to do next. Well, Cleopas and I decided we might as well go back to Emmaus and see our friends down there. So we were going to sort of set off a bit earlier today, actually, but <laughs> it didn't happen. The women went off early this morning and they couldn't find the body of Jesus. We thought, that's ridiculous. We all knew he'd been put in the tomb. We all saw. He must be there. They must have got it wrong. Surely. Anyway, others went and they couldn't find him either. So we decided we'd go. So later than we thought, we set off on this road to Emmaus. As we were walking along, this bloke came up. <laughs> he seemed a nice enough chap. He was listening. But he commented. As he walked along, he said, could, could he walk with us? We said, oh, no problem. And he commented how miserable we looked. I thought, oh, yeah, so would you, mate, if you'd been involved. So Cleopas said to him, he said, do you not know what's happened? I said, what's happened? You mean, you've been in Jerusalem and you didn't know of all that's happened there over these last few days? About Jesus of Nazareth and, and how we've been hoping great things but our leaders put him to death? He didn't seem to know a thing. So we told him what had happened. We told him about the cross, we told him about the tomb, we told him about the women. We told him we were escaping down to Emmaus. We'd go and see friends. We'd go and talk with them. Not that they could make it any better. But it was another place, another view. They weren't trapped anymore in quite the same way. So we were walking along. And he said to us, you know, he said, do you not understand what the prophets meant? And we thought, what on earth is he talking about? The prophets meant. So he, he went on, and we sat and we had a drink of water as we went, and he, he went on and he said, you know, he said, well, look, he said, Think what all the prophets are saying about all these things and how they must happen to the one who was to come, to Messiah. Well, what he told it, it seemed to make some sense. I don't know about us. Anyway, he went on and he explained all that was there. He started with Moses and he worked his way through. And by the time we got to Emmaus, it was drawing dark. Well, we'd arrived and he was going to go on. He said, no, no, come on, stay here for a bit. You might as well, it's getting dark anyway. So he did. And our friends put him up, put us up. 
So when they made a meal, it wasn't a great meal, but there was bread and there was wine. And as we started the meal, he took the bread and he broke it. And as he broke the bread, we knew it was him. We knew it was Jesus. And suddenly, he didn't seem to be there. He was gone. And we looked to me, searched to me. We, we, we wondered what on earth had happened. But he wasn't there. We couldn't stay in Emmaus, could we? I mean, we had to go all the way back to Jerusalem and, and tell them. And so, so we set off, excitedly talking, uh, and we, we said to each other, we, 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 we could feel our hearts burning within us. As we went back to Jerusalem. And when we got there, we found the brothers and the sisters, and, and we said, but before we could say anything, they said, Jesus is alive. Simon Peter's seen him. So we told them what had happened to us. Why? They hardly believed it either. But it was true. In the case of the last few weeks, you, perhaps like me, have been shut in. Shut in and wondering quite what the future is going to hold. Yeah, our faith has been tested. Our way of worship has fallen apart in terms of the tradition. Suddenly we're doing things differently. Suddenly, maybe we're discovering how to be a new kind of church. A new expression of Jesus in the world and his presence in the world. You and I have been locked away. And yet, in all our locking away, he has been there. In those moments of despair, when you feel you've fallen apart, he's been there. But there are times when churches and church communities do fall apart, when people fall apart. Behind me on the shelf, you can see a little wooden cross. And in many ways, that is part of a falling apart. It came from the communion rail of a church that was closed. Everybody was in despair. Everybody felt it was hopeless. Whatever was said, it couldn't start again. It couldn't just resurrect, couldn't it? And yet, six, perhaps seven years later, a new church opened, combining the tradition of three churches. Sharing together, living together, being together. A moment of resurrection, a moment for the living God. And it is the living God 
who is with us even in our despair and in our despair he can bring us peace. <laughs>